and gentlemen, well, welcome to the palace once again. We're very honoured today to host this really important Orwell debate under the fine guidance of our long-standing supporter, Matthew Paris. Matthew, will please, would you like to introduce your I will panel this yes. morning? Yes. And uh, first, uh, Firstly, on, on behalf of the Orwell Prize, we, we're awfully pleased to see you and welcome you and thank you for coming. Let me tell you a little bit about the Orwell Prize. Uh, incidentally, uh, Gavin Freegard, who's from the Orwell Prize, will be among you. And if you see a man tapping into his mobile phone, it's because he is twittering from this meeting. What, what, what more? No, no, oh, cool. Oh, well, <laughs> you may well see a, a very frustrated man tapping into his mobile phone. What a pity, because I think Orwell would have approved of, of Twittering. In a Twitter, apparently, you have to do it in 140 words, and Orwell, who was nothing if not spare characters, nothing if not spare uh, in his prose, would rather have approved of that. The Orwell Prize is Britain's leading prize for political writing. There's a book prize and a journalism prize every year, and this year there's going to be a blogging prize as well. <laughs> it was Orwell's ambition, in his own words, to make political writing into an art. And the prize wants to enthuse people about good political writing and thinking. And for that reason, they and we are delighted to be here in Buxton. Now, uh, my panel, I shall probably get to people muddled up, but I think on my far right is Marina, and I'm going to pronounce this right, because she's got lots of Monica Lewinsky jokes to tell if I get it wrong, we don't want to tell them. So it's uh, Marina Levitska from oh, Sheffield. Well <laughs> there you go, well, you And you must have heard of her first novel, A Short History of Tractors in Ukraine. She's just published her third novel, We Are All Made of Glue. A second novel, Two Caravans, was shortlisted for the Orwell Prize in 2008. Then there's on my immediate right, Delia Jarrett McCauley, an academic, a writer, and a broadcaster, the only novelist to win the Orwell Prize. She won it in 2006 for Moses, Citizen, and Me. She's the author of a biography of Una Master, BBC's first black producer who broadcast with Orwell. Robert Macron. <laughs> On my immediate left is the former literary editor and now the associate editor of The Observer. He's the former editor-in-chief of publishing house Faber and Faber. He's co-author of The Story of English. He wrote My Year Off After a Massive Stroke. He recently wrote The Observer article about 1984, the masterpiece that killed George Orwell. And on the far left, uh, Chris Cleave, who has literally just finished his third novel this morning. <laughs> Can you see a man with a huge weight lifted from his shoulders? His debut novel, Incendiary, was about a fictional terrorist attack in London, which happened to be published on 7 7. I don't think lucky is quite the right word, but you know what I mean. His second novel, The Other Hand, was shortlisted for the Costa Prize and sold a quarter of a million copies. So there we are at the Big Hand World. <laughs> what I think I shall do is ask each of our panelists for a shortish opening statement, three, four, five minutes, something like that. Then I'd like to hand it over to the whole floor so that anyone who either has a question to ask or put to any member of the panel or simply wants to make a point themselves uh, can, can do so. I, I thought I would uh, just start with a, a little anecdote of, of my own. And, and that is that when I was an eight-year-old, I was sent for a couple of terms to a, a boarding school. And I was going through that phase that children sometimes do of being voracious, hungry for any sort of reading. And there was an old musty bookshelf in this school which was in the Vumba Mountains in what was then southern Rhodesia. And on it I found an old penguin paperback book called Animal Farm. And I thought, gosh, it's a story about animals. <laughs> and I pulled it out excitedly. 
And I read it in one evening, cover to cover. And I absolutely loved the story. And I never realized it was a political <laughs> <laughs> And yet I think that the lessons of Animal Farm, whether we were talking about a pig or Trotsky, the lessons of Animal Farm sunk in to the eight-year-old through the medium of a story about animals without me needing to know the historical references. And what we're going to be talking about today is what makes a good political 